Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, this is the biggest jump I've ever done. So, let me tell you more about it. Whoa. <laughs> that was huge. Ah, oh, if I can get over my fear of jumps, you can get over yours. Before we get into jumping, a disclaimer or sort of step one first. I wanted to let you know that jumping, if you didn't realize already, is pretty dangerous and you can hurt yourself when doing that. Not only can you hurt yourself, your body, but you can also damage your EUC. Those things are not yet designed for this hardcore use, and while some of them are more durable and can withstand a beating, you will certainly shorten the lifespan of your wheel if you do jumps. So if you're doing jumps, wear protective gear. I'm wearing MTP shoes, uh, Liat knee pads, lazy rolling uh, protective shirt, and you can also wear armor that also has chest protection. I'm wearing a full face uh, motocross uh, helmet, gloves, and you can also wear wrist guards. This is when it comes to the rider. When it comes to the EUC that is best suited for jumps, the S22 is still king, an S22 Pro. And then on second place, I would put the Bigode Extreme that I'm riding today and the veteran Sherman S. So with suspension, you will get the best performance uh, for jumping and the S22 tops that off with a great software. And remember that EUCs do create a bit of havoc on landing, so take a small shovel with you and make those things flat after you're done with jumping. Much better. With that said, let's get into step two. To make sure that your EUC is set up correctly. So first of all, you check all of your bolts on your suspension, that they're tight, lock tighted, and that they don't move. Second of all, check your tire pressure. Typically, the higher your tire pressure, the more pop you'll get on those jumps. I put around 40 PSI into this uh, Bigode Extreme. And lastly, when you get to jumps, for example, with a car or with a train, uh, don't jump when you have a full battery. This is the easiest way to damage your control board. So start jumping at around 90, 95% or preferably less because then there's a lesser likelihood of frying the board by overcharging the battery when landing on a jump. All right, so step three on the list is the pad setup. Now you can see that I'm actually rocking the stock setup on the Bigode Extreme just because it fits to the jumping style and the riding style I do. But if you have any sort of custom pads like uh, Nylonov, Kinetic pads, Grizzler pads, here's a couple of things to note, actually four things to note. First thing to note is to have this jump pad pretty down low. Now you don't have to have it as tight as I have here uh, I have it tight just because it's short, so I can still like grab my foot out pretty easily. Now you can also have a full commitment setup to have them very tight against your foot, and this is better for your foot not to move around. But I prefer to have just slightly a bit of space here or just a narrower pad like here on the extreme uh, in order to still have leverage on the wheel, my foot not move around, but I can also bail if I have to. Now the second thing to note is the pad on your heel. It is as important as the jump pad, I would say, because if you try to lift up your wheel and your heel is not locked, you will just pull with the jump pad, which will result in the wheel spinning backwards. Very important here, the, the tail pad needs to be right where your shoe ends or slightly higher. So if you are pulling the wheel up, you're doing it unilaterally. I believe that's the right word here. Third thing to note, the front pad I like to have a bit further in the front, so I have still some uh, room for my legs to bend down in case I'm doing a big jump. Or you can, you can jump without the front pad completely, so you have complete knee movement on jumps, which is amazing. When you have them really up close, it is quite easy to overpower it because you just push against the wheel and it can dip. But if you can work with a tight pad set up in the front, well, kudos to you. If that works for you, that's great. With the back pad, well, I don't mind it at all, just don't have it too close to your heel. So if you land and your leg moves around, uh, you just instantly overpower the wheel. So that is essentially the four points of this pad setup. With this setup, it will be a bit easier for you to do those jumps and especially bigger jumps. Finally, let's get on to jumping itself. 
All right, so before we get in one of the bigger jumps that we have here with gaps, it'll be time to start up with something smaller, like this small hop. All right, guys, it's step four on the list. And finally, we get to do a small hop. We learn how to fly. A couple of things to note before you start jumping on one of these hops. Typically, it's just a small takeoff, I don't know, 30, 40 centimeters and a flat landing or a slight drop. So depending on the speed you have here, you can either land very closely or a bit further away. A mistake that I typically see when I see people starting out to jump is that they want to lean forward on the takeoff. So let me show you how it should not be done. So I go up to the jump very slow and then I'll lean in and then you get a lot of tire spin. This was very slow, so no fall occurred. If I would lean harder, I would have possibly face planted on the landing. What you need to do instead is have more speed and have the shibby position. So it's not turned like this, but uh, I saw Shibby do it first, so that's what I call it. Essentially, you want to not lean on the pads here, have your arms front, and then this is the position sort of. So you don't accelerate, you don't brake. It is a pretty neutral position. Let me demonstrate to you how that looks like. Now I carry a lot more speed into the jump. Shibby. And smooth landing. Another thing to note here, and it's really easy to work on those jumps because they just forgive you pretty much everything if you have suspension. If you're in the air, don't try to lift the EUC up. This typically ends badly, uh, unless you do it uh, not in an extreme, no pun intended, way. So once you're in the air, the EUC should rather push into you rather than you pulling it up. So you need to keep this in mind in order to have stability in jumps and not let the wheel spin either forwards or backwards. Further on, when landing, don't try to brake. <laughs> I see that a lot, people landing on their heels and this can overpower the wheel. So once you do a jump, try to land flat. So essentially, you just ride flat, you continue riding over the air and you land and absorb the landing with your knee. So let me just show you how I would do this jump if it was me, and I am me. Okay, so gathering one more speed, probably about 20 kilometers an hour, bend in front. Whee! All right, guys, so doing the small jump, about 15 kilometers an hour, hands forward, knees tight, and landing. Easy landing, easy flight, no turbulences, that's how you do it. Let's get on to something bigger. All right, so the fifth thing on the list is tabletops. So what you see now, well, it's not perfectly a tabletop because it dives in, caves in a little bit, but those are jumps that are very forgiving if you're scared. So, you know, you don't uh, fly far enough. You can land here, you can land here, whatever. There's different sort of landings, different sort of takeoffs. The flatter the landing, the easier it is for the EUC to jump over it. It doesn't require as much technique as a vertical tabletop, which I'll show you a bit later. So with this jump, you just carry enough speed, do the same thing essentially as we did on the small hop and land on the landing which goes down. Now, with a landing that is sloped, it is much more smoother, much nicer to the experience. If you have a flat landing, you just be prepared that the impact of the landing will be a lot less smooth. Let me de demonstrate to you this jump real quick. I hope I don't fall in this pit of leaves because then I will leave the video. So once again, small jump, I would say 20, 25 kilometers an hour tops for this jump. Let's go. Oh, muddy. <laughs> so very simple jump, really super smooth. Nothing to think about here. Now we'll do it real slow with trying to lift up the wheel in order to gain this distance. That's really what happens then. Slightly faster. Hands forward. So with those tabletops, uh, especially flat ones like, the, like these ones, it's very nice to, to do those jumps early on. Very forgiving, easy to do, about 20 kilometers an hour for such a jump. So I hope you enjoy one of those soon when you practice on your EUC. Now let's get on a bit of a bigger tabletop there. All right, so this is a bit of a bigger tabletop, about one, two, and a half meters of length. Here's a couple of things to note. First of all, it's also very forgiving. If you land too early, no problem. You land here, you land here. 
Miha was training this jump just a second ago, landed a couple times here until he landed on this side. In general, this jump is just like in the middle of a city. This might be slippery. On this side, we have roots. So you need to be careful not to hit with your pedal against that. You need to check your trajectory where to go, more or less. What I wanted to say with bigger tabletops, especially with uh, ramps that go up steeper, you need to have a bit of a different technique here. So I take a very big run up, more than necessary to just have the right speed. So here I go above maybe 30 kilometers an hour. And then the trick is, let me grab my EUC real quick, to once again have the shibby position. You get the EUC and before the takeoff, you don't lean forward, you lean back essentially or, or to a zero position. So you just keep balanced. This thing will launch you. Once you start doing jumps like these, first jump you do, you will be scared. So keep that in mind and don't be afraid of the height because once you get that landing right, this will feel like let me show you this jump. All right, so we have this big run up, C catching speed, getting more speed, 35 even kilometers an hour, shibby, and then go. I landed about right, but the thing is a bit annoying with those big and veteran wheels, they tilt back. So I've been talking with them. Maybe there will be no tilt back soon with an update, but for now it is there. S22 is still best for those jumps. Let's do a pal grab. Don't be afraid to move your hands up and down. Try your best. Just don't land on your heels. Land flat. And once you're on the landing, don't break. Because that's the typical thing we do as EUC riders. We don't realize how much we're breaking, especially downhill. Once you are up in the air, you land, keep that momentum. And probably if you have a jump line, you'll right away go into the next jump. Okay, now doing the big line. Remember to keep speed. Don't be afraid of the wall in front of you, you'll get up it, Whee! and then the second jump, <laughs> everything sneezy breezy. From the side those jumps look really really bad, but once you're on top, no problem. With that said, I think that's enough about tabletops, let's, uh, let's get on to something bigger. Alright guys, so the next category I wanted to show you, number six on the list, is drops. It doesn't have to be such a big one because this one goes from here. You fly over this whole thing and you land here. So it's almost like a bit of a gap drop. So usually what you will see is some sort of maybe wooden structure and then you drop down. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind when doing some drops. First of all, it's very important not to break on the landing. That's what I see a lot of times. People are scared to just get the speed once they do the landing. So when you do it on a bike, you'll accelerate immediately. On you see, we just break and we don't even know about it. So it's very important to keep leaning forward. And once you land, keep going. Just don't go mash on your feet and then just overpower the EUC. Depending on the drop you do, here we need a little bit of speed to clear this gap. So I'll be going probably around, I think 25 kilometers now at 30. But there's also drops where you just need very little speed, like 10, 15 kilometers an hour. Depending on the sort of arch you need to do in the air, you will need a different amount of speed. The steeper the landing will be, the more smooth, but also the more speed you'll have. With a drop like this, this is super smooth, super smooth landing. But if you have a flat landing, then your knees will suffer a lot and the suspension as well. So with that said, let's get on to jumping this thing. Hit it. <laughs> All right, so good drop. Maybe I had slightly too much braking on the landing. You can see here, very deep grooves. Let's try again with a different angle of the camera. All right, you can see the landings here, pretty tight. I might have a little bit more speed and I'll change the angle so you can see what it looks like from the top. It is. And getting up to speed, more speed, I see 28, a bit 30, and let's hit it, whoa, still pretty hard on the heels, oh, well, let's go, whoa, oh yeah, that felt really good, a really, really good landing. Let's move on to gap jumps. All right, so last up on the list are gap jumps. 
So those things are probably the most terrifying thing that you will see in a bike park. And if you look at them from the side, they are, they certainly are. Oh my God, I'll land here, I'll die. Oh my God, I'll land here, I'll die. But in reality, they're less scary than you might think. So one of the best um, tactics to clear a gap jump is to have a buddy go in front of you who already did it. And then you can do it with the same speed. But if you don't, well, it's time to send. Now, I think that the best strategy in general is to get comfortable with tabletops first and doing some other jumps before you get into those. But if you're ready to send it, well, usually you don't land here anyway. I would say that's the last level on my list. I'm actually super terrified on this jump because I never did it. It's very slippery. Uh, it looks like it will hold me. So, well, let's, uh, let's conquer the fear together. <laughs> Check how the takeoff looks like. Looks pretty okay. Maybe a second check just to gain some time. Looks all right. Well then, let's let's hit it. It's a pretty steep takeoff, so I'll have to lean a little bit back, but let's hit it. Speed! Woo! <laughs> so not too bad with the speed. I'll try to do it a bit cleaner now. Doing the shibby. Hit it. Okay. It's a lot less intimidating once you've done it a couple times. And this is the general rule for jumps. Once you start doing them, even if you fall, I would say 95% of the time, it doesn't turn out bad. So I guess this is it for the video today. I was a bit dissatisfied with the original ending of the video. So I really wanted to actually conquer my fears and do this jump that I've been looking at since three years. I've already done it, spoilers, probably see it in the intro, but now I want to do it properly. And welcome to Wrong Way. And today, this is the biggest jump I've ever done. So, let me tell you more about it. That was huge. Ah! Oh. If you can get over your fear, if I can get over my fear of jumps, you can get over yours. Oh! My ass! For the body. Send it! <laughs> oh yeah! So now with that said, <laughs> leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this, send it, and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. What a day.